guys welcome back to Nick's reads i have been on booktube for a while now i still don't have uh, my favorite books of all time book recommendations video up yes i have a list of books that i would consider my favorites and yet out of those books i can only recommend you maybe one or two for one reason or the other which i will get into i know it sounds a bit confusing that i have favorite books but i don't technically recommend them to people but you will understand so my goodreads account which i will link down below if you want to follow me i do have a favorites tag i have a few books that once were on that list and since then have been removed yeah let's do that we'll start with the honorable mentions the night circus by aaron morgenstern it is an amazing atmospheric read it is a very very slow burn two people who turn out to have some kind of magical abilities they're being mentored by more powerful magicians and they're being pitched against each other in a magical contest that takes place within this night circus that just appears out of nowhere and it's magical and super mysterious looking for alaska by john green was on this list at some point this is a coming of age story of a group of teens that surrounds this kind of bad girl mysterious girl where does she actually come from girl named alaska wonder by rj palacio technically a middle grade and this is about Augie who is a young child who has whose face looks different and this book is about his and his family's and other people's point of views on how he deals with going to school and making friends and being bullied and this just really 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 tugged at my heartstrings and my last honorable mention Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is what I would call a more classic sci-fi. This combines so many great things. One of them is a school and training setting, people who become really, really great friends. It's just a great story, but I took it off my favorites. Book two and the novellas afterwards are not five stars for me anymore. And in order for a book that is part of a series to be a favorite, I think all of the books have to be amazing. Moving on to the books that are still on my actual favorites list, which this list is so messy, I'm almost embarrassed to talk about it because why do I even consider these favorites? The first category is the books that I used to be obsessed with as a teenager, but I know that they will not hold up if I reread them. And in this case, I actually did reread this book and it was knocked down from a five star to a three star so fast, so hard, but I don't care. It's technically still a favorite. It's the Idun Chronicles by Laura Gallego Garcia. So the reason why I have this in a copy is because I did reread this and I decided I'm not going to continue. So this has four, four books in a series. I was absolutely in love with the characters and with this world when I read it first, like what, 10 years ago? Since my reread, I realized that this fantasy story is really more <laughs> a love triangle story where the author kind of sneaked in all of the fantasy elements. I am gonna erase that from my memories. I'm gonna keep this series in mind as if I was still, what, 13, 15? The thing is, I'm not sure if there is an English translation to this because this, as you can see, is actually the German copy. There is an anime series on Netflix, which just came out, I think, last year. It's called The Idun Chronicles. And I noticed, I think I watched only the first episode, that some of the dialogue they used word for word. So if you still are interested in the story and you're an English speaker, you can watch it on Netflix, even though you cannot read it. So this is from a Spanish author. So if you're Spanish speaking, then go ahead, you can check this out. So the book starts when Jack, a teenage boy, comes home, basically sees some kind of ninja figure in his home who just killed his parents. It turns out that this magician who saved Jack is actually part of a rebel group who is trying to save the Idun planet and in to do so they have to find the last remaining dragon and the last remaining unicorn and they suspect that Jack must have something to do with these creatures and he meets Victoria who's a girl who is his age. The love story in this book is something that I have never read in any other fantasy or any other book whatsoever afterwards because it's quite 
unique, might be even described as controversial, but I thought it was executed very interestingly. In that same category is Aragon by Christopher Paolini. Man, the obsession with the series was real. It was intense and it held on for a few years. I don't know how many times I watched that movie, but I definitely had a huge crush on that what's his name Ed Spoliers the guy who played Aragon in this awful awful movie <laughs> and I don't know how many times I've listened to Keep Holding On by Avril Lavigne in this fantastical world dragons are dead they've all been killed off and suddenly this random farm boy Aragon finds a dragon egg and the dragon hatches and he becomes a dragon rider and he goes on to this quest of training, making this connection with his dragon, Sephira, suddenly being involved in trying to defeat this great big evil in the world. This world just completely sucked me in and I wanted to reread it, but then after I reread this book and I was just so like disappointed, I said to myself, I'm not gonna do that to myself, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep Aragon in my memories as one of my most favorite fantastical series ever. But if I reread it now, I'm sure I'm just gonna find one flaw after the other. And the last book in that category of I loved it as a teen, will I love it today? Probably not, is Niura by Jenny Mai Nguyen. And this one is kind of hard to recommend because it's from a German author and I don't think there's an English translation for it. In short, this book is about a half-elf. She goes on this quest with a group of also elves to defeat this evil king that presides over the lands. This sounds so lame, but I remember it being crazy crazy emotional there were different points of views there was a crazy twist there was like a super 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 dramatic love story in there and a very i remember bawling my eyes out at like a very dramatic death also published in german so i cannot really recommend it to the non-german speaking peeps out there but stay with me it's i swear it's the last one of this sort <laughs> Die Hüter der Rose by Rebecca Gablet. This is historical fiction and what this author is a specialist in is she takes important happenings in English history and plants fictional characters in it and we live through these fictional characters. She does a fantastic job, job every time. And you know what? I don't think I would be afraid to reread this because to this day I still have books of hers on my TBR and I actually still have one physically that I haven't read yet that I'm waiting to get to this year. So you know what? This one holds up. Okay, on to the books that I still to this day consider a favorite and I can recommend it to the English-speaking world. First of all, I would be lying if I didn't include the Harry Potter series in here. This is just two random ones that I grabbed off my shelf. As you know, the author is very controversial right now, but it would be a blatant lie if I didn't tell you that I still reread let's say one book at least a year. It sparked my love for reading. It sparked my love for fantasy. It was the first time that characters and a world sucked me in so, so much that I kept thinking about it after closing the book. Don't really read her new works. I think I read one of her, what was it, Cameron Strike novels, but I stopped. I don't really buy new books from her anymore, but this really, really did shape my childhood and my teen years. Not to forget, part of my top three is Scythe. Well, I'm holding up all three books because all three books are fantastic, but really, you know, Scythe start obviously with the first one by Neil Schusterman. You're turned off because you hear it's YA or you're turned off because you hear it's dystopian. Don't let that stop you from picking these up. Even if you don't read dystopian or YA or sci-fi, these just are that good. I recommended these to my best friend and my sister. My friend, she read all of these already and my sister just in fact finished Scythe the other day and she texted me along the lines of, oh my fucking God, what is this book? This is amazing. <laughs> I talked about these before in my 2021 favorites because that's when I read The Trolls, so the last book in the series. This series takes place in a world that is absolute perfection. The humanity has conquered diseases and war and famine and economic crises. It conquered death so people don't have to die anymore. You can just turn a corner and become young again and start living out your years again. The issue is humanity was not able to venture out in space and set up a colony on let's say Mars. The resources on Earth are finite, which means that people still have to die somehow, if not of natural causes, then of what? Of sites. So there's this, these people who are called the sites whose job it is to 
kill people. They can have their own methods, but they have to keep up a balance of the population. And the book starts when two teens are chosen to become scythe apprentices. And that's when they learn that even in the most perfect world, there's still such a thing as corruption and power hunger, just evil people who will try to overthrow the current system, even if it technically benefits everybody. For being YA, I would describe this book as being ruthless and the twists and turns you have in these books, you don't see them coming. I cannot tell you how many times throughout the series I was left speechless at the turn that the author chose for the story. And I want you to have that experience. These are just that good. I know they've been super hyped on booktube a few years ago, but these hold up. And my last actual favorite book that I want to mention, I don't think I've talked about ever before on booktube, is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. So this book, I can actually tell you that I've read at least four times because I made it a habit of trying to find the different copies in different, either in German or in English with different covers and buying them so that I have as many as possible, which I just noticed that I don't have one here. So it's time for me to buy a new one. And every single time I buy a new copy, I actually reread the book. Plus it's not that long. This book is middle grade, but don't let that stop you from reading it. It is so creepy, so atmospheric. It's a great ride. In this story, we have Coraline who moves houses with her parents. They don't have a lot of time for her. They're too focused on their work. So Coraline spends the day exploring their new apartment. And one day she comes across this tiny door that she opens and on the other side is a different world where suddenly her mom and dad are the best parents in the world and everything is so much more perfect. But for some reason, the other mother and everybody else in that world has buttons for eyes. It's mysterious, it's creepy, and it's witty. Not exclusively, but especially if you're into middle grade, you should put this book on your TBR if you haven't read it already. Funny enough, I read, I think, two more books are by Neil Gaiman, which I really, really disliked. So for some reason, this one book of his is on my favorites, but everything else of him, I just don't like. So this was a very, very unusual favorites video. I hope you were able to stick with me. At least I gave you an understanding of why I don't like talking about my favorite books, because it is a mess as you just heard. But I am hopeful as I will keep reading books throughout the years that I will finally have at least, let's say five where I can with confidence say, these are favorite books. I recommend all of them. Do you have favorite books or are you in the same kind of dilemma as me with this kind of question? So thank you so much for sticking with me if you're still here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.